You're watching the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome to the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. This afternoon, the Radford Highlanders take on the West Virginia Mountaineers. And hello, everybody. It's Dan Zangrilli and wonderful Warren Baker alongside for a day that's a very special day as a Mountaineer returns home as head coach of the Highlanders, Darius Nichols, is back in the University City. Yeah, Darius gave us a lot of good time when he was playing here, and now as a coach, I'm not surprised to see that. Look at these numbers, Warren. He was so good inside, outside with the basketball. You really liked him as a cerebral player, didn't you? Yes, I did. Very, very athletic, but he used his brain as much and was very smart on the court. It's not surprising me at all that he's a coach at this point. So how about this? Darius will become just the second West Virginia player to coach against the Mountaineers here at the Coliseum. Fred Schaus bought his Purdue team here in 1975. Huggins was a player uh, in that game, and now Bob is able to go up against one of his own. He believes, Coach Huggins does, that Darris is the first former player of his that he'll be coaching against. Dean Ice, we'll be talking about him as the evening wears on. Well, there's Bob Huggins. Huggs continues to climb on the all-time wins list. He is 14 away from Jim Calhoun, year number 15 for the Huggy Bear. And we're underway here from the Coliseum. Sean McNeil is out with a lower back injury, so Kobe Johnson starts in his place. But it's Kedrian Johnson who will walk it up the floor for West Virginia. Well, to see Rafford play aggressive defense should not surprise you, knowing that he played for Hugs. Cottrell can't finish, and the Highlanders out of there. And an early three strong from Hart. The starting five for the Highlanders. Off the rim, a little strong from Kobe Johnson. And it'll be Highlander basketball. Kobe Johnson's first start. He's going to be a very good player. Hudson's is very high on him. You know, hopefully Sean's injury is not something that's going to keep him out any length of time, but Kobe Johnson does get the start. So how does it affect West Virginia as the steal here? Johnson. And West Virginia's got the first two of the game. Johnson. Nice start for Kobe Johnson. And West Virginia and their patented man-to-man pressure. Good ball rotation. And out to Joseph, the lefty shot. A little short. And crashing is Kedry and Johnson. Good box out by West Virginia. We've seen them struggle rebounding some, but that time, good box out. Cottrell. Isaiah over Walker. And he hits Isaiah. from long distance. 4 nothing Mountaineers over the Highlanders. Isaiah Cottrell really needed that. He had been struggling to shoot from outside. Good to see that first one go down. Brian Hart over to the right side. And out front to Walker. A take on Cottrell changing hands. But Jalen Bridges out of there with the rebound for the Mountaineers. Looking yep. to start the game on a 6-0 run, perhaps 7-0 run. If Johnson, as they perimeter pass, over into that corner to Jalen Bridges. Inside to JB. Out of control. And we've got a foul. Two shots coming. Well, somewhat of a tangle up inside. Right J JB fortunate to get that, that call. Jalen Bridges, 6 of 9, 67%. Eight points against Bellerman. Mountaineers have won three straight. And the Fairmont senior polar bear makes it a 5 to nothing West Virginia advantage. Radford comes in on a three with a three-game winning streak as well. His team is gaining confidence as they go along. So I know they're not going to quit, but uh, it's good to see them get you know, a winning streak going as well. And they started well, did Radford, and then they hit a bump in the road, losing four straight, but against William and Mary, Eastern Kentucky, and last time out against Kentucky Christian, the Highlanders able to put together some good basketball. Off to a slow start here. Oh, 
And the dish off. Into the game, Lewis Jonkum, the VCU transfer for the first field goal. And Rapid with a little 2 2 1 press. West Virginia handles it, really no problem. Jalen Bridges out high. And 10 on the clock for the Mountaineers. Lost the handle. Cottrell has three seconds. Cottrell, can JB get it off in time? Looks like he did, but obviously off to the left. And there's Bridges with the steal. Taz pulls up from the angle right. Sherman. Well, Taz Sherman gets in, a shot, uh, in the area like that, he's going to knock that shot down. We've played nearly three and a half minutes here at the Coliseum. In what is the seventh meeting between WVU and Radford. Jonkum out front. Williams strong. Jonkum the rebound and the tip. Sherman nearly stole it. And one on the drive by R2 Stapleton for Radford. Boy, Stapleton to the board hard. Got that ball high on the glass and drew the foul. R2 Stapleton, junior forward for Darius Nichols. The Chicago, Illinois native. He's uh, one of a handful of Division II transfers here to uh, Radford. I was talking to uh, Coach Nichols, uh, you and I, uh, Warren were, and uh, he really likes that Division II level because he believes that the level in which that Radford is playing at, that they believe that they can get a lot of talent that is undermined, ripe for the picking. They could really perform uh, at the level, and, and so far, so good for the Highlanders. We'll talk about some of those uh, gentlemen as the evening wears on, as uh, the transfer portal is a, a hot topic for, for Darius Nichols as well. Here's Kedrian Johnson. Sherman tried to drop it in. Gabe Osaboyan into the lineup is stripped of it. Only for the favor to be returned by Kedrian Johnson. Kobe Johnson. Kobe Johnson. Nice job by Kobe Johnson using the rim for protection to get that ball off the glass. Tarion Joseph with the left hand on the downhill take. Nice drive to the basket, finish with that left hand. And just like that, a two point game. Here's Gabe on the bounce to Sherman. Let's see what Taz does. Shoots over everything and hits. Long two. Taz Sherman. He's one of 33 to average over 20 a game in the United States. He looks so comfortable now when he's shooting the basketball. Stapleton. We got a block away from the uh, from the ball. Breaking the action. West Virginia. 11 to 7. Just over 15 minutes left. Taz Sherman and the Mountaineers return to the Coliseum here in a moment. Welcome back to the Coliseum. You know, it's not very often that an opposing coach gets a warm welcome from fans, but when you're a Mountaineer favorite, you sure do. Darius Nichols has so many wonderful memories inside this building. He said his best, though, came on February 11th in 2007 when the Mountaineers knocked off number two UCLA 70 to 65. He says the experts didn't even say that was a big upset at the time because the Bruins were without their starting point guard and some guy by the name of Russell Westbrook filled in for the Bruins. He said it was a magical moment, one of the highlights of his career on this very floor that he's now coaching on. Dan. Amanda, thank you so much. Amanda Maisie reporting. We'll hear from her as the afternoon wears on. Yeah, that was in the uh, NIT championship run uh, into 2007. An Elite Eight, a couple of Sweet 16s for Darius Nichols. And you now his career high as a player, points in a game, was actually at Radford, uh, and it's amazing. Uh, on Darius Nichols' day, City named a day after him. He rolled off a career best 23 in that contest back uh, in December of 2007. Well, it must be nice to have a, a day named after you, yeah. you know. 
got the key to the city that day. <laughs> Warren, we're going to do that for you here in uh, Morgantown before too long. How about Gabe? Osaboyan. There is the signature D. And Damon Kerrigan taking a page out of Osaboyan's book. Sherman from the baseline rattles it home. And Taz Sherman has hit his first two shots of the afternoon. Taz has more confidence than I've ever seen him have. He's really, really, really liked where he is with his game. Josiah Jeffers into the lineup. So too is Cameron McNeil. Now for Radford Bake, you don't know who really is the dude on this roster, right? right? So you have McNeil there, the sophomore guard. We were talking to, to Coach Nichols, and we were talking to other folks at Radford. They really spread it around. They don't have a double-digit score. So this is going to be a Radford team that goes deep into their bench and uses a lot of players and plays really the epitome of team basketball. They, they have 11 players that are playing more than 12 minutes. So that's a really using your bench. West Virginia to their bench here. Uh, Seth Wilson would like to have that one back. Radford can tie with a three. Out of control. And there's a three try. Joseph can't get it, but he'll eventually get it back up the offensive rebound. One thing that West Virginia's had trouble with, when teams shoot a lot of threes, the rebounds are going to be longer. And West Virginia has not done a good job of getting long rebounds. Taz from way outside. That rebound short range into the hands of Jules. And the transition game for Joseph. We'll see. Kick out. And the drive and drop in by Cameron McNeil. West Virginia's had a lot of trouble with straight line drives this year. And that's something that really bothers us. You got to get in front of men. Mountaineer one, two, lead. Two pressure. One, two, two pressure by Rapid. Mountaineer lead trimmed to one. Gabe can't finish. Kerrigan on the second chance. West Virginia's going to sub a few. Damon Kerrigan, Jalen Bridges coming back into the lane, into the lineup with uh, Polly Polycap. Again, West Virginia applying some pressure. Radford with a good break. But there's Polycap on the back end. Boy, he's been fun to watch the last handful of games. Nice hasn't he? to have a good rim protector. Nice job by Polycap. The moving three, and the southpaw, able to hit it, Malik Curry. He had nine points, four rebounds against Bellarmine. Before that, against Eastern Kentucky, he was really good with a season-high 16. It'll stay with Radford, and that'll bring us to a break in the action. So the Mountaineers able to keep the Highlanders at an arm's length, 16 to 12. West Virginia, 11.42 to go here at the Coliseum, opening half. Welcome back to the WVU Coliseum. Malik Curry, the last few games, has been really good for West Virginia. Now the Mountaineer lefty shooter has really electrified and so far off to a good start. More on that. Here's Amanda. Charleston a few weeks ago. Malik got to see his son for the first time in five months, his one-year-old son, Malachi. This is the longest he's ever gone without seeing him because when he was at ODU, he was able to drive down to South Carolina where his son lives. It's just about four hours away. It's a lot harder now with school and basketball and being so far away, but he was so happy to see him down in South Carolina and he said he just was so happy to get his hands around him and hug and kiss him and guys I tell you what when he was talking about his son he had the biggest smile on his face so that was definitely a shot in the heart that he needed right now all right Amanda thank you very much yep. Malachi cute little fella <laughs> and Malik well hopefully uh, Malachi will have a lot more to jump up and down about because uh, I think Malik is really starting to find his way yes, he here is. at West Virginia. He's feeling much more comfortable. He was the leading scorer at ODU last year, but it took him a while to kind of get into the flow of what Hugs once done, but you can see it coming now. Shaquan Jules on the line for Radford going up to the dunk out of the break was fouled. You know, I, I'm sure Hugs is going to be upset again 
That was an inbounds play that almost scored for Radford, and they had worked on that this morning. And um, West Virginia's really had uh, trouble uh, defending baseline out of bounds. One, two, two, pressure by Radford. Kedrian Johnson harassed. And there's Malik Curry splitting defenders and finding Sherman for three. Uh, Sherman for three. Excellent decision by Malik oh, Curry. Curry. Uh, Malik Curry with the backcourt foul. West Virginia foul. And that was all Curry oh, creating Curry there, huh, Big? Yes. Going down the lane, reading everything, spotted. Taz in the corner, got him the ball in good shape, and you, you saw the results. Transfer from ODU, Malik Curry. Mountaineers, uh, one of many teams that have uh, hit the portal, and they've really, I, I think, complemented their existing core well with these guys, Curry being a part of that. Though, so Jeffers is able to get by him here and pull the Highlanders within five. Deflected out by Radford. This, uh, this Radford penetration of the basket is really giving West Virginia problems right now. Now, Hubs is always saying, stay in front of him, stay in front of him. We keep seeing straight line drives to the basket time and time again. West Virginia by five, Jalen Bridges. Find Curry. Likes to go with his left. And unable to find an open teammate. That should be coming back to let's see Radford. Did it get a hand on a Highlander? They're gonna say That's that Curry dip. just threw it out. Let's see. Mm. I couldn't really tell. The official standing right there would have to go and say that that was correct. McNeil, no good. And we'll get the tie-up. Arrow to Radford. Polycap right there. Scrap it around for it. We mentioned Malik Curry. He and uh, Jonkum fighting for that ball. Osaboyan's coming in. Osaboyan a transfer. Polycap a transfer. Curry a transfer into the program. Boy, all have really melded so well for West Virginia. Mangum over to Stapleton on the step back. And missed that one badly. And West Virginia leading by five will get it back with 10 minutes, 20 seconds to go. Here at the Coliseum, seventh meeting between the two teams. Mountaineers have won all six, a series that began in 1991. Last time these two teams tangled, it was December of 2016. Fouled from beyond the arc, Taz Sherman. Well, that's just a killer if you're uh, Darius Nichols. Taz finally misses a shot, but uh, he gets fouled and will have a chance at the line for three. You know, as I look at the Radford defense, I can see a lot of the principles that, that uh, Darius is using that he got from Bob. And, of course, he was at Florida for a while. He's been around. So he has a... You know, a whole thing of uh, different defensive things that he can do, and he's really got that team believing in the defense. West Virginia perhaps gifted three free throws to a very good free throw shooter at 86% Taz Sherman. Darius, D Nice, likely inquiring about that. Year number one. And, and yeah, who will we see here? Are we going to see equal parts John Beeline? Or are we going to see equal parts Bob Huggins? That's going to be the, the question here, Bake. Who is Darius Nichols? Obviously his own man, right? But it'll well, be fun as the game evolves I, here to see how it all pans out. I think defensively you will see a bunch of Bob Huggins there. You know, Bob Herzl, a terrific sports writer here in West Virginia, was asked, what are the best traits to Huggins this is that you would like to believe that you've bestowed on a guy like Darius Nichols? What are some of the worst? That's a great question by a great writer. As we get these two teams scrapping for it, and the Mountaineers out of there with it. And essentially, as Sherman can't finish, Polycap gets it out of there, and a hard foul on Kedri and Johnson. There's some physical basketball played here, and I guess it kind of ties in here as we'll get another look. 
Now, Hug said, I want to see the fight and the desire to win. That's the best quality that I believe that I could bestow on a guy like Darius Nichols. And you see some fighting here from Polycap. Well, I, I really like the energy that Polycap brings. So I think that's what we're going to see. What we just saw in the last uh, couple of up and down sequences, I hope we get more of that as the game wears on. West Virginia by eight. Sherman. A spin move and a kick out. Got to get it on the board. Gabe with a clock yeah, expiring, able to get it off. Oh boy, his offensive game has evolved, hasn't yeah, it? It has. He switched that to the left hand and had and laid it up softly. Excellent move with the shot clock running out. Josiah Jeffers doubled. Jonkum can't finish. Wow, are they going to get Polycap or are they no. going to get Jonkum coming back the other way? Boy, has Polycap been a spark off the bench. What did you like about that, Bake? I mean, just the tenacity. He went after that. He was going to get that ball, and that was it. How about the help side defense there? Look at that rebound. That's textbook, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, you get those big meat hooks on it. Nobody's going to get that ball away from him. Polly Polly Cap. Six foot eight, 235 pound senior. As you take a look at Darius Nichols there. Bob Huggins, the pupil and the teacher, going up against one another. And family day here at the WVU Coliseum. Ah, the ugly sweater. <laughs> that's you, Bob Ross, huh? You big Bob Ross fan. Uh, you, you said that I didn't. Uh, so. <laughs> the projectiles come out of the uh, stands toward uh, I'm, I'm a point of view. <laughs> you never been to an ugly sweater party, man? <laughs> Come on. I've got tons of them, but no, not about this. Really I think we've got the Youngstown State game, and maybe we could talk to our bosses. We can wear ugly sweaters oh, here my. instead of the suit and tie. It'll be a little <laughs> more comfortable. Oh, happy early holidays to you and yours. Dan's angrily Warren Baker, Amanda Maisie. Glad to have you along on this Saturday afternoon, West Virginia and Radford. Really historic day here with Darius Nichols, the former Mountaineer. Great uh, returning to coach against his alma mater. Sherman trying to force one up. Gabe, the putback. Radford cannot allow West Virginia's bigs to get that deep. On the baseline and coming back to WVU. So West Virginia's been able to, to extend it by 12. Kedrian Johnson. Osaboyan uh, pass deflected out off of Sherman's hands. Fairly accurate. A little gas on it from Gabe Osaboyan to Taz Sherman. For the Highlanders, this is a team that's had great success. Big South Conference members returning four starters from a team that went 12 and 6. Second place finishers in the Big South. The opening and taking it straight to the cup. Tarion Joseph. Boy, I tell you, this is that's probably the fourth or fifth time that they've been able to get all the way to the rack just by driving you know, straight and hard. Taz off his screen. Can't find the bottom. And back to Radford. 7.29 remains in our opening half. West Virginia, the lead of 10 over the Radford Highlanders. Taz Sherman, Gabe Osuboyan, and the Mountaineers are rolling. Welcome back to the Coliseum, and welcome back to the Taz Sherman Show. Warren Baker, what do you got on this guy? Well, you know, the thing that, that you have to like about him is that he is so relaxed. He knows what he wants to do, and he doesn't rush it. That's what you have to like about the way Taz shoots that basketball. Good look there from Malik Curry. And he's got a mid-range game going, the outside game going, and West Virginia is in the lead by 10 over the Radford Highlanders. Thanks for being with us here from the Coliseum in Morgantown on a Saturday afternoon. Tarion Joseph. Picked up by Malik Curry. 
Clock inside of 10. Radford discombobulated. Got a hurry. Can they get one off? Under pressure, Brian Hart unable to convert. Well, what West Virginia has done now, they've gone small. Johnson, uh, both Johnsons and Curry on the floor. And the steal, Joseph. Boy, can't finish. A lot of contact there. Hart for the third time able to volley at home there is Shaquan Jules. And Hugs is seen enough. West Virginia loves to getting back on defense after he missed that free or that uh, layup inside. He is not pleased. He's going to pull all five, put five new guys in. Yeah, hockey line change coming up. Cottrell out high inside of 10. Sets one for Curry. And the floater unable to go down, but we've got a foul. Yeah, there was a shove on Cottrell. Officials picked it up. So five in, five out. Sherman. So what do you think about this combination? Hugs is still tweaking. Uh, really with, with you know his five he's got a fairly deep bench right and we see even a Taj Thweet coming into the game here for West Virginia Hux well, is still mixing and matching it, well he's mixing and matching right now because he's not happy with the five that were on the floor he wants five guys that are going to play hard and that whoever it is will be the ones that are going to be out there but he did not like that Sherman short from the corner Polycap ripping one away keeping it away now Osaboyan will try to force his way in. Can't finish his own. And is able to draw a foul on the floor. And right now, West Virginia is just exerting their will inside. So much stronger oh, inside. Hudge wants to see that at the other end with the it's defensive first. rebounding, though. Well, Gabe Osaboyan. Effort not an issue, and Hugs was telling us uh, unquestionably, Osaboyan, this is his team. He is the leader. He's got the biggest voice in that dressing room. And they kind of beat to his drum. And it's a hard nosed drum. Front end of the one and one no good. West Virginia with the heat. But Radford. Able to overcome it, McNeil. Well, West Virginia had a really good trap, and that's just a good play by Radford. Back to a six-point ball game. Polycap with a one-hand slam. Polly, good luck from Sherman. Highlanders flag it down. McNeil saw an opening. And the kick to Williams. And he stepped out of bounds. How about this? Look at this, Bake. Oh, that was an excellent trap. And uh, I don't know how I even saw him. That was a great pass. On the other end, what a look from Sherman to Polycap. I always like to see big guys get rewarded when they run the floor. And that's exactly what Polycap did just now. Sherman's going to run the show now for West Virginia. It's that high screen and the no-look pass. Taj Thweet can't find it. It'll stay with West Virginia. Inside of five minutes to go in our opening half, and WVU in the lead by eight. We've seen him scrap here in the early yeah, going. Yes. Osaboyan up the baseline. Osaboyan oh, takes it all the way. Gabe just bulldozed his way to the hole just now. That's, he was not going to be denied. And I don't think anybody wants to try to get in front of him to take a charge. Well, his offensive game continues to evolve. He fouls on the other end here. Does Gabe Osaboyan do this last year? No. Make? No, his, his offensive game has come, oh my gosh, a ton since... Uh, since last year. And he's, made, he's gotten more confidence oh, now. He's we've got a technical going. foul. Hold up here. I think Taj Thweet is going to be assessed a technical. How or why? I'm unsure. 
So he was reaching in. Reaching in, I, I don't know now. why you would. He's a little he's, befuddled as well. Yeah. Perhaps we'll get a further explanation from the officials. Rick Crawford, Marcus uh, Pettigrew as Second part of the crew. And here's Amy Bonner hitting the ball out of bounds. So Amy Bonner, who, by the way, it's not a personal or a team foul, by the way. So he reached to slap it while it was out of bounds. So that is a technical foul. And Amy Bonner informing us of that. And you see Amy Bonner there to the bottom of your screen. She becomes the first female official to ever work a West Virginia men's basketball game. So welcome Amy Bonner to the Coliseum. History in the making on that front today. Joseph sends it over to the left side. Williams harassed. Osa Boyan all up in his space. Needs help with Jeffers and heaves one up. Nearly hits. Good defensive stop for West Virginia. Now that's the Gabe Osaboyan factor for WVU. Taz Sherman with the take. We're going to get a foul here. Not a clean block. Lower body involved on that block, which will give Sherman a couple. Now West Virginia hasn't been able to pull away. Radford's been able to hang around here. Just over four minutes remain in the opening half. Sherman leading the way for WVU. I'm sure Darius told his ball club. You're not going to play against a more physical crowd than you will with, against West Virginia. He knew that, he, and I'm sure his players said, yeah, 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 they can tell right now, yeah, he was right. The reigning Big 12 Player of the Week a year ago, honorable mention in the league. Taz Sherman, and you were remarking to me, how you're just completely bewildered the fact that Taz had zero offers coming out of high school. No, unbelievable. We talk about earning everything. Ooh. Roshan Williams has earned Radford an opportunity to keep this within single digits. 32-23 on the big three ball. Sweet out of bounds. So just over three and a half minutes remain in our opening half. West Virginia 32, Radford 23 here at the Coliseum. Bob Huggins Mountaineers are on top by nine. Busy week around Mountaineer Athletics starting with women's basketball Tuesday. And then it's the third year Big East Big 12 basketball challenge as you've got 17th ranked UConn coming to the Coliseum to take on the Mountaineers. Longtime rivalry resumes for the first time between these former Big East foes since 2015. You can watch it on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. That's Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. And UConn is a good basketball team. Now the Mountaineers certainly in their non-conference schedule have been tested a couple of games ago. Eastern Kentucky and uh, Radford, I think, is giving West Virginia some fits here, particularly some penetration here. Is a foul on West Virginia. And again, if, if there is the one knock that we have on Gabe, is that he does pick up fouls in a bunch sometimes. Now, Hug's not at all happy with that foul on Osaboyan. Carry on Joseph to shots. Joseph to the line. Checking in for the Mountaineers, Jamie Bridges and Katie Johnson. Rosa Boyan has to come out, Bridges in. I think one of the things that might have been a little concerning to Bob Huggins, looking at that uh, Connecticut game coming up, he didn't want this team, you know, this basketball, to overlook rap, you know, with a big game. Kids have a tendency to do that sometimes. Now misses on one end. It remains a nine-point contest, 32-23 Mountaineers. Taz Sherman, he's been the show here, creates his own space and hits. Wow. That's what you got to rely on sometimes, Bake. That's next level good. I mean, that really was. That, 
he created his own space, like you said, and then, again, with that soft rhythm that he has, able to knock it down. Cottrell guarding well here. The contested shot and the rebound. Nice job by Cottrell. On the other end, West Virginia unable to hit with Jamal King, the freshman from Canton, Ohio, into the lineup for the Mountaineers. McNeil draws contact. That'll be on Keedry and Johnson for WVU. A couple of shots coming up. I, I just looked at Keedry and Johnson and said, why? There was no need to foul just now. Yeah, that far away from the cup. Yeah. Well, McNeil for Radford. Seven and a half points per game. Spartansburg Methodist, Division II school. He shot 39% from three and 82 from the free throw line a year ago. Well, Radford's not doing themselves any good at the free throw line here. That's, that's... See, one, uh, one, two, two. Press if they try to trap out of it. Boy, Sherman just able to get across the timeline. Cottrell with a take, uh, can't finish. Just a little strong, nice drive though. Highlanders down 12, Williams too strong. Uncontested rebound for Jalen Bridges. Sherman stripped from behind, you don't see it often. And he missed it, Tarion Joseph. Oh, that's a tough one. No. Trying to be too cute. This Warren Baker is a tough place to be. Oh. That's a lonely island. Yes, it is. Excellent steal, but could not finish at the other end. Tough scene. Into the game, Xavier Lipscomb for the Highlanders. They've got five to go. Better hurry. Williams smothered. The prayer, the buzzer is no good. And West Virginia with a 10 point lead. Just over a minute to go. Mountaineers will try to pull away before the halftime break. Sherman from the elbow. Got it. And Sherman. Can't guard him. West Virginia by a dozen. Mountaineers nice. held by Sherman. <laughs> Suffocating underneath. He missed that time, but Polly Tap is this there. Oh, and one. Oh, Virginia, the strength underneath. That is exactly right. Strength underneath. At the beginning of the year, Polly Polycap would not have made that shot. He probably would have banged it off the board. But you can see he and the bigs have been working with Eric Martin so much, and you can just see how much better they've gotten. You know, I think before it's all said and done, right? Gabo Saboyan, a fan favorite amongst Mountaineer fans. I think Pauly Pauly Cap is going to find his way into the good graces of many a Mountaineer fan yes. before this year is uh, all said and done. We were remarking uh, earlier that, boy, it's just a shame that he's going to be a one and done here, the senior. Man, if he were here for a while, is out of control. Yeah. There's Pauly Cap on the defensive end taking the charge. Case in point there, Bake. Yep, taking a page out of Gabe's book right there. Get down and uh, get established and take that charge. Boy, he's been a spark for the Mountaineers. Well, Mountaineers love a hard-working guy with the hard hat 
and the lunch pail and I think we've got that here in Morgantown with Polly Polly Yep, it's Paulie. his real name the transfer from DePaul starting 15 and 19 games and now there's a hard worker right in the middle of that huddle for West Virginia in Darius Nichols his return to the University City he was uh, here a year ago when the Mountaineers uh, met with Florida he was uh, an assistant for a long while uh, for the Gators and uh, his Radford team has shown some scrap here in the opening half, but West Virginia with the 15-point lead. Yeah, West Virginia's defense is really, really kind of taking this thing over right now, the way they're putting pressure on the ball. You know, uh, Gabe, Gabe has said, and, and no disrespect to Arkansas, but Gabe has said publicly that he wished he had come here initially. Sure. And truth be known, if you talk to Polly Gap and Kerrigan, they might say the same thing. I think they wish maybe they had been, but again, it is what it is. A better late than never. That's right. Now the Mountaineers, of course, so uh, with Derek Culver exiting uh, the program. They had to find some strength inside. Yeah. The Hugs just can't give up that strong back end, you know. Two seconds left, Sherman. That he's dominated ends it with an exclamation point with the clock winding down it's the same he never changes us everything is so fluid with love to the student section <laughs> amanda's with hugs all right, Coach, before the game, you told me you weren't happy this season about not really stepping on anybody's throat in the first half. How are you stepping right now, and how do you keep that momentum in the second half? Well, once we got going, I thought we were pretty good. I mean, we struggled early to get going, though. What do you think was the turnaround in this game as far as, like, getting the shots off? Uh, at number 22 can really make shots. I mean, he's just, he turns the game around. Your thoughts on the play of Kobe Johnson, who started in place of Sean McNeil? Kobe's going to be a really good player. You know, it's just, it's 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 a growing period for those younger guys. That's why we're trying to play a bunch of them now. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. So the Mountaineers, a lot to cheer about, a lot to smile about. 42-24, West Virginia over Radford at the half here in Morgantown. It's West Virginia 42 and Radford 24. Thanks for joining us here at the WVU Coliseum. Dan Zangrilly and Warren Baker, glad to have you along. What do you got on this one, Bake? Well, I think West Virginia's defense, uh, they ramped it up, and it really got uh, Radford out of sync. And Radford needs to get back in that if they're going to try to get back in this game. But West Virginia's defense has been the big thing. Cameron McNeil, eight points for Radford. Take a look at what he was able to do in the opening half. What do you see, Bake? Well, he was just able to uh, he shot some tough shots, and they were contested. But uh, in a game like this, you have to have somebody that can step up, and he's been the one person that they were able to lean on. Well, the Mountaineer defense, they've been good. Def uh, just uh, take a look at how smothering they have been at times. Jalen Bridges there. Of course, uh, Taz Sherman leading the way with 21. And Tad Sherman is just in a zone by himself right now. He's so comfortable with uh, with what he's doing, and um, I don't think he thinks he can miss a shot. And he probably, probably can't the way he's playing right now. As Sherman, 21 points. He's one of 33 players nationally, averaging over 20 points per game. The six foot four, 190 pound senior from Missouri City, Texas. Uh, we apologize. We have not been. In, in, ignoring you guys but uh we haven't been able to uh get continual stats so we'll try to do a better job but we haven't been getting it yeah we'll uh do that old school is uh, larry harrison west virginia associate head coach breaking it all down and Amanda had an opportunity to chat with the former Mountaineer and head coach Darius Nichols of the All right, Coach Nichols, you guys got close and then they started pulling away. What do you have to do in the second half to keep it competitive and come out with a W? I think we got to do a better job taking care of the ball. We got some opportunities in transition, did convert. We got to convert. We got to convert when we get those opportunities. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate it. Pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, but they, um... And Darius knows what the, what he has to get done here. I don't know that he has the manpower to get it done. And West Virginia so much 
more physical and stronger than his club, but uh, he knows the right things to say to his club. Should say, easy for us to say, much yeah, harder yes. for he and his team to do. do right. <laughs> Now, West Virginia's been really good defensively so far this afternoon. Wish we could give you some uh, better metrics, if you will, as uh, Bake mentioned. We've uh, had to do it old school. We've got the pen and the paper trying to keep tally uh, on the offensive numbers so we don't really have rebounding or any of those uh, tertiary statistics that could really tell a pretty good story. As the Mountaineers, Jalen Bridges on the elbow. Cottrell high off the window. Boy, that is, that's sweet to hug's eyes. He wants to see more of that out of Isaiah Cottrell. Heart harassed. Good patience by Radford, unable to hit the shot with Terry on Joseph. Sherman pushing and kicking. And the rotation to Kobe Johnson. Kobe Johnson starting for Sean McNeil out with a lower back injury. He did not shoot around earlier this morning as Cottrell along the baseline. Kedry and Johnson fading away as time expires, unable to convert. Yeah, really not a good set that time for the Mountaineers. Open look and able to hit Brian Hart. Hampton, Virginia, grad student. His sixth year with his third different school. A little too easy. That was a, that was a wide open look from the top of the key. A defensive mix up by the Mountaineers. Nothing developing right now for West Virginia. So give it to Sherman and let him draw contact. He'll go to the line. You know, Sherman, Sherman now too has a reputation of being such a good scorer that he might get some calls like that that a lot of other players might not get just because of his ability to score and he always has the ball around him. So the officials are looking very closely at the guys guarding him. 21 in the opening half for Taz Sherman. His career high is 28 a couple of games ago against Eastern Kentucky. Really good free throw shooter with the rare miss here. Malik Curry back into the lineup for WVU. Reigning Big 12 player of the week, the team's leading scorer. And rattles it home. Double figures in every game so far here for West Virginia. Averaging over 20 a game. Given 21 here in this, 22 rather, in this game. He's been the offensive glue for West Virginia. I mean, and, and Hugs would rather it not be that way. He would like to see a little more diversity in his scoring, but heck, he's won every which way that you can, and sometimes it just has to be one guy. And here is that one guy. Sherman by himself on both ends. Oh, they're going to say he's out of control. Oh, my. Bob Huggins is, is arguing that the player was in that restricted area inside the arc. Was he? Let's see here. Take a look and see. Uh, now, you really couldn't oh, tell from there. It, it appeared initially he was outside. Oh, it was Walker set. Oh, well, one said charge. I guess they did change it to a block. So hold a sec. Yeah, it did. Oh, they, well, Sherman's going to the line. They must have overturned the call. By Sherman. He's at the line. Initially, they did call the uh, they called the charge. Yeah. Maybe the officials looked and got together and said, no, he was inside of that arc. Or maybe just wasn't set. set yeah. But again, a guy like Taz is going to get some calls like that, and he deserves to. Able to convert. West Virginia 48, Radford 27. We've played two and a half minutes, 25 for Taz Sherman, by the way. 
Williams out high. Another West Virginia steal. Malik Curry with a no look to Bridges. And he hits. <laughs> Timeout called by Radford. Trying to keep the train on the tracks is former Mountaineer and first year head coach Darius Nichols of the Radford Highlanders. But the Mountaineers right now proving to be a little too much. What a dish there by Malik Curry. West Virginia. In the second half. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. The Mountaineers 51, the Highlanders of Radford 27. Timeout on the floor called by Radford because of this sequence right here, Bake. Yeah, West Virginia in those passing lanes, able to get a hand on the ball, and then good job by Malik Curry to find Bridges in the corner, and JD can knock him down. I have three passes. Timeout called by Radford. Now Radford's going to call timeout. another timeout. So back to back timeouts here. Huh. Off of the uh, inbound, we'll keep it right here. Darius Nichols will huddle up his team, so he's burned a, a couple of timeouts. Radford with just one remaining. So they want to get this right and try to stay within striking distance as the Mountaineers have really been suffocating defensively. You know, Taz Sherman with the, the 25 points for West Virginia. Uh, but I, I think, you know, Hugs is probably going to take away one of the, if not the best defensive performance of the year so far. I know there's a lot of a basketball to be played here, and, and the, the goodwill that they put forth in the first half can really be undone, but I think you really have to be pleased if you're hugs with a defensive I, effort. I, I think so, except for the, the uh, straight line, uh, the drives to the basket. I think, other than that, he'd be pretty pleased. I think Huck's probably got the attention of his ball club when he uh, substituted five in because he was not happy with the way they were playing. Yeah, it was earlier in the first half, a hockey line change sending a message. Look at West Virginia with a steal here. Jalen Bridges going into the first row. Wow. Crowd can appreciate that. Curry trying to split a couple defenders, drawing contact. We'll get to the free throw line for WVU. Well, and again, Paulie Pollock on the floor, creating something, making it happen. This is Bob Huggins Mountaineer basketball right here. <laughs> Pauly Cap involved. There's Kedry and Johnson, and then the Curry take to get to the line. And Malik is able to knock one down. Arms crossed. Hard to please. <laughs> that guy right there. Oh, he is. Yeah. Curry missed the back end. A look at Curry guarding Josiah Jeffress. All over him. Well, once you pick the ball up, West Virginia overplays those lanes so well. Poke it away temporarily. Five seconds, it'll stay with Radford. Fun to watch, isn't it, when it really is working? When, when you see an offensive player with his back to the basket the majority of the time, they are really struggling to score. It's hard for them to even square up and face the basket right now with the type of pressure West Virginia is putting on. So the sideline front court inbound for Jeffers inside of five and the steal. Curry using that high screen, spin move and kick out. On the lob, Holly Cap able to finish on the other side. Took his time, gathered himself. Again, at the beginning of the year, that one bangs off the other side of the uh, the backboard. Now was that an oop attempt? It looked like, or I don't know if it was just yeah, an errant I, pass. But no, I think, I think it was going to be. A, I think it was going to be a lob. Off iron left, Jeffers. See what West Virginia runs here. 
Osaboyan's in the mix now. Got in some early foul trouble. And West Virginia threw it away with a miscommunication between Johnson and Polycap. And that'll take us to a break. 54-27, West Virginia coming out in the second half, imposing their will here at the Coliseum on a Saturday afternoon. Do stay with us. That guy right there getting a breather. He deserves it. The reigning Big 12 player of the week for West Virginia. Well, he deserves that too. My goodness, the way he has been uh, shooting the basketball, carrying West Virginia for the most part. Things are going to get tougher for for Taz though once they get into Big 12 play. But still, yeah, he's doing it up right now. 25 points this afternoon for Sherman. Three off his career high. The last uh, week plus here, he's been just. Uh, Besting his single season personal records, or single game personal records, I should say, as Radford out of the break. Able to get one to go. They needed that desperately. Mountaineers' lead is trimmed to 24. So Malik Curry will run it for West Virginia. Kobe Johnson starting in place of the injured Sean McNeil. If you're joining us late, McNeil not playing today. Did not shoot around this morning. Lower back injury. Osaboyan can't finish it with the left. Stapleton, the quick kick, will get it back. And now the reversal for Radford. Stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds, yep. I was, I was hoping Gabe, did, when I first looked over, I thought maybe they were going to call a foul on Gabe, but no, he stepped out of bounds. West Virginia's Curry rims it out and off the bounce. City Njai is into the game. Put back try. Uh, Volleyed around and out of there. Young come with it. Cinny right there. Almost had his tip in. Hugs like, likes the way that young man is progressing. Njai with the rebound. And West Virginia the lead of 24. Curry on the kick. Gabe thought about it. Now sends it off to Kobe driving, stripped. And they yep. say he was out of control. He was out of control. Kobe Johnson. So one of the worst things you can do sometimes is predetermine what you're going to do before you get the ball. I think he had his mind made up that he was going to drive the drive the uh, hole right now and and the defense just collapsed and got in a good position. That was Jonkum, Lewis Jonkum, the VCU transfer, taking the charge. Yeah, Gabe with a open. Now, those are the type of fouls that really bothers Hugs about Gabe. Gabe's going to get some fouls called then down inside, whatever, but you don't want to see him, you know, 35, 40 feet from the basket picking up a foul. And so Gabe Osaboyan heads to the bench with his third foul. West Virginia by 24. And it'll be Radford ball. Jeffers with some daylight from that left angle. Able that was to take a very it out. difficult shot. A little crack of daylight. All of a sudden, a couple of unanswered baskets by the Highlanders, and now they pressure wow. the ball and get a steal. I think Jalen Bridges got fouled on that play. No, no. Now he commits one. Oh, Frustration oh, foul, perhaps. Yeah. Oh, I think he. I think he had a little beef there. I think he did get fouled when he so threw that pass away just now. Each team with three. Jeffers, another opening, another take, but couldn't convert with the right hand. Ninjai with a very, very good rebound. Had a way to get weak side, huh? 
Keating to the cup. Keating Johnson. Well, that was a difficult shot, too. You have somebody hanging on you like that and still strong enough to get it up on the glass. Stapleton corrals it. His own 0 for 2. And there's Enjai. What is that? Three, four three, rebounds three, yeah. here in a short period of time. I'd like to see him get a basket here. Oh. West Virginia a little careless there. But Kedri and Johnson. Spin move a little too quickly. Hit his head off the court. Slow to get up for three. Hart on the other end. Hopefully Kedri and Johnson is uh, okay. okay yeah. Looking at him down here off camera. He's wincing a little bit. He's got to get right quick. He's got the rock in his hands. West Virginia 56, Radford 35. Curry with the move. Unable to finish. Enjai nearly corralled it. It's off of him out of bounds. There's a timeout on the floor. Break in the action. West Virginia. Unable to hang on to the basketball as well as Hugs would like, but still a 56-35 lead. Well, what do you say? We get in that flux capacitor, go back to the future. The third year Big East Big 12 battle rolls on this week. And how about the 17th ranked Huskies coming to the Coliseum to take on the Mountaineers, right? Just like the old days. Former Big East foes will tangle for the first time since 2015. It'll be on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. So set your uh, timer, mark it down. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, West Virginia and UConn here in the University City. Thanks for joining us on your Saturday afternoon, turning evening. Dan Zang, really, Warren Baker, Amanda Mazey. Glad to have you along here on ESPN+. Plus. West Virginia with a foul. Malik Curry picking it up for WVU. Number two on Curry. It's hard to, it's hard to, to regulate sometimes. They see, you see a lot of hand checking going on and it's not called and then again you hand check and it is called. Sometimes you're just kind of confused as to what's happening. Taz Sherman back out on the floor for West Virginia. Five to go. Long three. Trying to draw contact on Cottrell. And he was successful. Hutz, Hutz just looked at Cottrell and said, why? And that was about a 35-foot shot that, uh, that Jeffries threw up. Uh, had a few more seconds, but figured, out, oh, let's lean yeah, in and yeah. see if you could get one, and he did. And he'll get three shots here. 0 for 1. The coaches hate to see you foul a three-point shooter if you're, you're shooting a three. The only thing is, if uh, the guy happens to miss a couple of them, then it's not uh, not quite as bad. But certainly, you don't want to see that happen. Rims it out. West Virginia by 20. Good ball movement. They get it to Seth Wilson. And he gets it to go with the left hand. Boy, a nice shot by Seth Wilson. In talking to Hugs, Seth Wilson is going to be one of those guys that Hugs thinks is going to be able to take a Taz Sherman or a Sean McNeil. He has that type of offense. Just hadn't played much yet, but that's the type of offense that he has. Probably a little soft spot in the heart. Ohio kid, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right. Yep, from Lorraine. West Virginia's got a uh, couple of those on the roster. Canton, Ohio's Jamil King, the other. Oh, 
West Virginia doing a better job of defending that baseline out of bounds. We've seen them get burned a number of times this year on uh, plays out of bounds. Clock again inside of 10 for Radford. Jeffers step back. Short. Can't keep it in play. Now the story today, if you're just joining us, Taz Sherman with 25, Mountaineers without Sean McNeil. Lower back injury. Seth Wilson. That's, that's what we're talking about. They actually, he's going to be a really, really good shooter and will be able to fill in those spots when Taz and Sean leave. Five points for Seth Wilson off the bench. And West Virginia extends their lead. Hart answers with a triple of his own. Brian Hart, grad student. Nine for Hart. And Radford keeping up with the pressure. Taz with the take. Unable to finish. That was a tough angle when I came off the board just now for Taz. West Virginia with a deflection out. A lot of those for West Virginia this year. Mountaineers, of course, uh, track those deflections. It's a big statistic for WVU. Last season, Gabe Osaboyan led the way with uh, 171 deflections. Is leading them again this year with 51. Keaton Johnson has 40. Jalen Bridges with 38. Basketball. And baseline out of bounds. That's one area that uh, you'd like to see West Virginia do a little bit better of a job today. In yeah. Hubbard. Cottrell, long two. West Virginia one and done. Leading by 20. McNeil, the cross court kick and out of bounds. It's happened a bunch today. Yeah, it has. Third. That's about the third or fourth time. And look who's going to make his Mountaineer debut. Oh, wow. Here comes James Oconquo for West Virginia, and the student section loves it. Oconquo is out earlier in the year with a broken foot. Uh, they're debating as to whether or not he was going to redshirt, although he can play a few games before that decision has to be made. They just didn't want to rush him back. Seth Wilson feeling it, so why not? How about Bridges scrapping it up down there? Loose ball, they let them play. And we've got a kick ball. Hit a foot. But the effort there for Bridges, nevertheless. One thing that I liked about the way JB's been playing lately, he hasn't, he's known as a scorer, but he's been doing all the other things that scorers do. Sometimes guys, when they're not scoring, you see it let down in other parts of the game. I haven't noticed that with him. Well, the uh, former polar bear, I think, understands as good as anybody the prerequisite That's exactly of right. what, it, uh, what is required here at West Virginia. Oconquo getting in on the guarding and forcing another Radford turnover. James Oconquo in there doubling up the Radford Highlanders. West Virginia's lead of 20 points here at the Coliseum. 7.46 to go. Stay with us. Back to the University City. Welcome back to the Coliseum. The Mountains with a commanding 20-point lead over Radford. So before the game, I asked Coach Huggins, I said, Coach, what is your identity of this team right now, seven games into the season? And in typical Hugs fashion, he's like, I don't know. I, but he did say that he wanted to see his team defend better, and he also wanted to see them run the offense better. Now, I know he's not going to say publicly that he's been pleased with this performance, but guys, you got to admit that this has been a pretty complete game on both ends of the ball, and that is especially important important when you're welcoming UConn in in just a few days. Yeah, Mandy, you can really see the uh, progress that Hugs has been opining about, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I think they've passed it also 
uh, much better than he's kind of lamented as well as Sherman pulls within one of his career high. Give Taz Sherman 27 points this afternoon. Taz Sherman looks like he can score whenever he wants to, or I know he can get his shot whenever he needs to, but uh, he just feels so comfortable, and hey, it's going to go down when I put it up. To the cup. And a score for Roshan Williams, the South Florida transfer. A leading scorer for the Radford Highlanders. They don't have anybody in double figures where they spread it all out. Uh, we asked the Radford folks, who's your best player? And they're like, well, uh, we don't know. We don't have one. And that's not an indictment wh whatsoever. It's just they have a ton of contributions. Guys averaging eight, six and a half, five and a half, eight and a half. Seven and a half, yeah. 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 Nothing wrong with that. Here's Okonkwo, Mountaineer debut. Sets the screen. Curry to step back. In and out. Coming back to the Highlanders. Gabe Osaboya checks in for the Mountaineers. Osaboyan checks back into the lineup with the three fouls for West Virginia as Darius uh, Nichols looks on and watches. Well, you can see what, what Darius is, is planning to do with his ball club. Even down, they are still pressing, getting out and getting in those passing lanes. And that's what he that's what once he gets the players in that he's going to have, that's the type of ball he wants to play. Behind the back dribble off the pick from Okonkwo. Curry to Taz Sherman. Sherman. Still sitting on 27. West Virginia still sitting on a 20-point lead. The steal into the one-on-two. Here's Taz. Waits for everybody to catch up. Yeah, good decision. Very good decision. Really didn't have numbers. Setting up and running. Okonkwo, his first. Oh. In and out. No good. First shot as a Mountaineer. The 6'8", 230-pound freshman from Maidenhead, England. Hugs says the sky is the limit for this young man once he gets really, really good. Now there you see on the weak side rebound. Yeah, he said he's talented. He'll be an all-league player down the road. Yeah. And listen, Hugs doesn't heat praise like that, that's, especially early. That's exactly right. Now you got to earn it. So for Hugs to go out there this early, it kind of gives you an idea. Osha Boyan sets one for Wilson. Sherman grabs the rebound and a foul will be assessed to Radford. Number four. Josiah Jeffers picks it up. Mountaineers get a late sub in. Taz Sherman checks out for Kobe Johnson. Kobe Johnson made his first start as a Mountaineer. Sean McNeil, for those joining us late, not playing today, lower back injury. Sherman takes a seat. I don't know if that'll be it for Sherman. 456 remaining. I'd be, I'd be shocked yeah. if Taz comes back in. Well, Hugs has really wanted to get some of the younger guys in. He's been able to do that today! Yeah. The young guy, the big man, Okonko. Welcome aboard! Boy, I give Dave Osaboyan a big assist on that. Six foot eight Okonkwo. That's a presence. Stapleton with the left. There's Okonkwo on the rim again. Yeah, he's got to come out. He's not in basketball shape. He is really sucking wind right now. Yeah, Hugs is going to have to nurse him along. And yeah. of course, you mentioned earlier the thought is still going to be there for him to. Uh, to, to red shirt, but sure. you could use him for a, a handful. Wilson got away with one. Can't finish. Joseph high off the window. It goes down. And again, as you see, Rapid still pressing. That's something that he wants that ball club to do. He wants the guys to have that type of mindset. 
Well, I'm really excited to see what these Highlanders do. Uh, Darius Nichols, of course, is just uh, a, a class act as Lewis Johncom lays it in for Radford. Uh, you know, he's a top 40, under 40. His entire staff is extremely young. There's nobody over the age of 40 on that Radford staff. As Curry will give Wilson another look, but he's short again. <laughs> Coming back the other way to Radford. Well, one thing that we were able to see that we weren't expecting coming into today's action is the Mountaineer debut of James Okonkwo, the veteran to the youngster. James Okonkwo with a two-handed rim rocker, West Virginia rolling. Mountaineers with the 18 point lead over the Radford Highlanders in their seventh uh, all time meeting between these two teams the first since 2016 Taz Sherman led the way with uh, 27 one off his career high he is on the bench for West Virginia as the Mountaineers have been able to get a lot of the young guys in here this afternoon and that includes James Okonkwo so that's going to be fun to see how and when in the few games that he can be utilized, uh, when and where he'll be utilized. Yeah, I, I, I like what Hudson's done. That, yeah, really, West Virginia could probably have run the score up more than they have yeah. there. But, uh, you know, he respects Darius, and uh, that's one of those things where he wants his team to play well, but he doesn't want to embarrass someone either. Curry from Curry. short range. Curry was able to contribute. Really like what we saw uh, from Senny Enjai as well. Seth Wilson coming out, hitting a few shots, especially early. Enjai with some of those uh, good rebounds. And of course, Okonkwo. And there's Enjai again, speaking of. And Enjai really does not know how to play yet, you know. He's getting better. Mountaineers uh, doing this without Sean McNeil today. If you're just tuning in, McNeil not playing, lower back, not even dressing, in fact. Jump ball. Jump ball. Possession arrow to the Mountaineers. Sean McNeil Check was not at shoot around, lower back. Uh -huh. Issues plaguing him. Yeah, most we saw him do today. He was on the bicycle for a while, but other than that, really didn't do anything. Have to check and see what the prognosis will be when the Mountaineers next get at it. Of course, back here at the Coliseum against UConn on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. That game on ESPN2. Well, if he's healthy, the Mountaineers certainly will need him. Now, the Mountaineers do need to develop that uh, additional offense. Maybe it's this guy, Curry. <laughs> Can't find it, but a good look nevertheless. Because as we get into Big 12 play, West Virginia is going to need some more offensive contributions. Curry could be a candidate. I suppose Keedrian Johnson, but McNeil, yes. of course, his outside shooting is just so important to this club. Well, it was nice to see Cottrell get some work done inside tonight, and that's what they're going to need as well. And Polycap continues to emerge. Yes, he does. So long as Osa Boyan is out of foul trouble, his offensive game continues to evolve as... King can't get it. West Virginia's Curry as the Mountaineers go 0 for 2 as we hit a minute to go. Joseph with the layup for Radford. Collision. Oh, I hope all are okay. Tweet took the brunt of that. But good to see him pop up. Yeah, all seem to be fine. So the good bake, what do you got? The not so good, what do you got in advance of UConn? Things that West Virginia will have to tighten, things that they can really build upon. Well, they're still a little careless with the basketball, and the rebounding certainly is going to have to continue to improve, although I do see some improvement now. And um, the, the good thing is Hudson's got a lot of guys in now, and it's some guys that are getting to feel comfortable who hadn't had an opportunity to play. And down the stretch, you never know or as the season goes on, Injuries, those type of things, you never know when you have to have people come in. Yeah, 
inside of a minute. Unable to finish was Kobe Johnson in West Virginia. Back up, let Radford take one more look at it. Sweet foul. A couple of shots for the Highlanders. So if you're Darius Nichols, right, what are you taking away from this one returning uh, home? Right, of course, uh, working at home. A Radford, Virginia native. Well, it's going to be it's going to be a work in progress the entire year for that uh, for them. Um, but I think I think he has his kids believing that what he is doing is the right thing. They're going to end up being a good pressing ball club, uh, and, and as they become more comfortable with him, then they're going to improve. Well, Hug said to the media earlier this week about Darius Nichols that he's essentially done everything right over the course of his career, from getting into coaching, the path that he took, Division Two, working his way all the way up to Florida. I mean, the guy is just one everywhere he's gone, and. I suspect before too long you're going to be seeing a lot of the Highlanders. They were a tournament team in 2018. And I would suspect that Darius Nichols will get them back there. Yep, I agree. So, Bake, give me your final thoughts on this one. Well, good win for the Mountaineers going into next Wednesday's big battle with UConn. And Radford, I think, came out and played as hard as they could. And looked pretty good. All right. Teacher, pupil, those two so close. Bob Huggins with another victory. The head coach of the Mountaineers continues to climb the ladder. Victory number 907 in his career is a commanding one over the Radford Highlanders 67 to 51. So for Warren Baker, Amanda Maisie, I'm Dan Zangrilli saying so long from Morgantown. All events airing on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. The following has been a presentation of ESPN.